So Focusrite have a brand new generation of Scarlet interfaces, the Scarlet Generation 4. And you may well be wondering, what are all the new things in the Scarlet 4th Gen versus the 3rd Gen? What is actually new and what does it mean for you making music? And in this video, we're going to go through that whole thing. What's new and demystify and explain all the various features. We've got Alex Godfrey from Focusrite to do that. Hello, Alex. So first... I am told that the preamps are completely revolutionized in the fourth gen. Can you explain preamps and sort of the input stage and what's new and why is it important? Yeah, there's a, so there's a giant leap forward now in the fourth generation. Um, we're using preamps that were originally designed for the RedNet range, which is like our uh, sort of like, yeah, super, super They're high. There, yeah, right? that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but now uh, you can get those preamps in your home studio and they sound amazing. How we uh, quantify sounding amazing is um, with, uh, I mean, the most important, most interesting metric to me is dynamic range. Uh, that's really important uh, feature of a good preamp. Uh, what dynamic range is, is it's the distance between the loudest sound it'll capture and the quietest sound it'll capture. Uh, so it's really, really helpful when you're sort of capturing nuanced recordings, um, really expressive playing. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's a huge dynamic range in these preamps now. Uh, what about gain? Because the gain value is like, that's when you've got a really quiet microphone, a bit like Shure SM7B, and you need to make it loud. Like, what is the, do you know the gain value for these? And how does it differ? Sure, yeah. So the uh, the gain range has improved as well. Uh, gains for effectively sort of like um, uh, it's sort of a more technical term for like volume. And yeah, when we when we now that we've got more gain on the preamps, uh, it'll handle uh, sort of quieter instruments or quieter microphones even better. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah. So the ultimate question is, what actually is the gain value? Do you know the value for the? So it's up to sixty nine decibels of gain range and one hundred and nineteen decibels of uh, dynamic range as well. Amazing. That's really good. 69 is a lot. That yeah. is a lot. So that will definitely handle SM7B and any ribbon mics, things that you may want. It's obviously a condenser. It's a phantom powered preamp, obviously. And then we'll also work with dynamic mics. Um, I feel like it's worth mentioning just the inputs. I noticed they are different, the front and back. What is the ch change there? Well, uh, now you've got, yeah, instead of the combi sockets that we had before, you've got a dedicated XLR inputs on the front and then dedicated uh, quarter inch jack inputs on the back. Um, big benefit of that is that you can have um, sort of your, maybe your synth plugged in all the time and then your microphones plugged in all the time. And um, you just press the um, the switch on the front to to go between them. So you can't record them both at once, but you can have them both connected at once. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Less faffage. That's yeah. good. Okay. Next thing, auto gain. What is that? Auto gain is really, really helpful feature to make uh, recording easier for uh, for just get, getting everything set up at home. Auto gain, what that does is effectively listens to your playing for like ten seconds, uh, analyzes an appropriate level of gain to set on the preamps, uh, and then just sets it automatically, so um, you don't have to worry about um, clipping or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So this is adjusting the input level so that it's you're the right level. You're not too loud. You're not too quiet, and it does it for you. You push the button and play. Do you? I mean, do you want to try this? Should we? Give yeah, it a of course. Go? Yeah, yeah. we've got a quick demonstration. Yeah, yeah, sweet. We have. Look at this. We've got a guitar and everything. And so, <laughs> what is? You've got the mic, the like kit mic. That's right. Yes, yeah, this, this is the CM25 microphone. This is included with the Scarlet Studio bundles. So there's the Scarlet Studio bundle and the Scarlet Solo Studio bundle. It's effectively it's a a Scarlet Solo or a two i two. Uh, with a pair of uh, their headphones These and um, and uh, yeah, and a microphone bundled in with it as well. So uh, I'm just going to uh, press the auto gain button on the front of the mic on the front of the interface here, and just to give a demonstration of maybe what bad um, <laughs> gain might sound like, is I'm just going to turn the gain like right down here, and you probably won't hear anything from the from the uh, from the preamp here. So. Uh, Um, and if they were too loud, you get all sorts of horrible clipping and distortion, which you can't fix once you've recorded it. So yeah, it's yeah. really important to set the gain right yeah. to begin with. Um, and how we would go about setting a nice gain level, I'm um, just going to press auto gain on the front here and then play for 10 seconds and then it'll figure out where to set the gain for me. So let's have a go at that. Okay, so that's now set the gain level, and um, yeah, we can just uh, focus on getting a good good recording without any uh, issues there. Do you want to give us a quick demo? 
Come on, now you've got it set up. Let's have a let's have a listen. Go on then. Uh... Nice. So cool. Or again, we've got improved dynamic range. We've got what was the other thing? So oh. there's also ClipSafe, which is new as well. <gasps> right. Okay. Yeah, ClipSafe is uh, it's a really really nice new feature to stop us clipping, uh, even if we go above the gain that we played. Um, uh, even if we go even louder than we were playing when kind, we set the gain level. I was kind of, when you demoed the auto gain thing, there is an evil part of my brain that was thinking, you know, you will play at a certain level when you're practicing that you might not do like when the red light is on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it always happens when we're actually doing a take, we start to lose ourselves a little bit and might say play a little bit harder. Um, and uh, so ClipSafe is there um, to kind of account for that problem as well. Um, what ClipSafe does is it analyzes the audio that's being recorded 96,000 times a second and listens out for any um any playing that's just a little bit louder than what it's ready for, and then it will just adjust the uh, the gain level accordingly as you're going. Nice, okay. um, which is really really handy. You know, it'll save um, save you trouble of yeah clipping in your takes, and you know if you're really getting into it and you played really really well, but there was a there was a bit that was a little bit loud, it'll it'll salvage that and it'll sound really really good. So. so it's like a is it a limiter or is it what does it what's the magic behind it? Uh, it's close to a limiter. Yeah, it's effect- yeah, it's effectively a limiter. Yeah, yeah, but a more transparent one that you're not really going to hear like obvious compression or some other effect. It's it's a safety net. That's right. Yeah, and it will actually just adjust because these are remote controlled um, uh, preamps as well, which is gives us a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, we'll just adjust the gain level ever so slightly in real time because yeah. um, yeah. it will detect that you're sort of just getting a little bit excited for a minute and then then it's nice correct. to have. So yeah, yeah. Auto gain is there to get it in the ballpark, but if you have an excitable moment, yes. you are saved. I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that okay. so you can see it in action. You'd probably be able to see on the front of the um preamp as well, the uh these nice gain halos here. They'll they'll be lighting up green when we're recording at a good level, and then sort of orange and red when we start to clip. But with clip safe on, um we should find that there's no uh no issues there, so I'll just start like... playing really loud jingles <laughs> for you now. <laughs> Now, if that clip safe hadn't been on, we would have got some real nasty distortion and it, recording ruin. Basically, you couldn't really do anything about that afterwards. But yeah, with clip safe, it kind of uh, it's wicked. Yeah, you can yeah, yeah. Go. So easy to use. You're new to recording. It's nice to have things like that. Like, yeah, a lower barrier to entry of the technicality to- of, of recording. Like, why not? Totally. Yeah. It basically, just means you can focus on getting a really good take, um, getting into the music, and you don't have to be like a recording engineer or an expert sound engineer to um, to just get really good sounding yeah. sounding records. Like have just, a good time. Yeah, That's really home. important because people need to have good experiences recording and like, yeah, the, you're going to get into the weeds of technicality when you get into mixing and stuff. But capturing at the source, getting it right at, at the take is super important. Obviously, absolutely. It's, it's yeah. Like, yeah. You can't be fixed stuff. Yeah. I'll give you your other headphones back. Um, Okay, there is another magic button on the front, air mode. Oh, yes, yes. What is that? Air mode's really nice. It's um, it's basically an optional, um, there's no right or wrong time to use air mode. What it does is um, gives it a nice little bit of an EQ tilt, effectively bringing out some of the... Um, with the clarity in some of the higher frequencies. It sounds really nice, in my opinion, on guitars and vocals. Yeah. Um, and um, the best thing, yeah, and, and, and yeah, sort of, uh, sort of emulates some of uh, some of those sort of heritage older preamps that made some classic records and that kind of thing. Um, it's, yeah, it's no right or wrong time to use it, uh, but I pretty much use it on everything. Um, yeah. But yeah, particularly like sort of spangly guitars and that kind of thing. It's like a do no harm... EQ lift in the highs, is it? What, do you know what the, what is the, is it a couple of dB of shelving lift or something? What, what actually is it? Yeah, it's a little bit of a lift um, in what we would call the area frequencies. There's a couple, a couple of dBs up there. I have seen it charted, but. Um, yeah. And is it an analog thing or is it a digital thing? Yeah, so it's now an analog, uh, all analog section for um, for air mode on the preamps, which is really nice analog sound. Um, but there's also now a new. Um, version of air on there which you can get to by pressing air twice which is air plus a little bit of what we're calling presence or a little bit of total a uh, little bit of harmonic distortion yeah uh, and that's uh dsp based as okay. well so yeah can we hear that yeah sure let's um I'm playing, just change your headphones but now we need to change your back sorry. <laughs> yeah sorry thanks i'm gonna push the button for you sure yeah so we maybe do it once with um 
uh, just just straight uh, once with air mode on and then once with air and presence on. It is a subtle nuance difference, but um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to hear it in action yeah. on, a, on a G chord. Okay, so I have my finger on the magic button and you're going to play a G chord uh, and then we'll hear it first with air off and then I'll engage it and then we we'll cycle into the air and the drive as well. I'll say when that's happening. Cool. All yeah. right then. Yeah, I'll just play some Gs for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So that's off, on, and with air and drive, and off, and with air, and air and drive, and off, yeah. You can hear, it's so subtle because obviously it's a couple of dB being added to the high end, but um, you can hear with the drive, there's just like a tiny little bit of that sort of crunchy, sort of sizzly kind of like tube pre vibe to yes. it, which is nice. And it's, yeah, I mean, these are so subtle, obviously, because the whole point is you don't apply like a mega, you know, fuzz distortion to like... You know, you want it to be a do no harm effect, I suppose, is the phrase, right? Right, yeah, so, exactly, yeah. So yeah. that you can use it, um, you know, use it without fear that it's going to cause issues and it will only just subtly improve. And so, right, so there's... Yeah, it sounds really nice on vocals as well. Just yeah. um, just that little bit of distortion, I don't know, adds, um, thickens, thickens up the sound a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. And it's, it's nice to, like, print those things. There are obviously plugins and stuff that can add colour and drive afterwards, but I guess the idea is that you're, you're just getting a more satisfying result at the source so that you're kind of closer to the final end result. Exactly, yeah. And with the air mode being all analog circuitry, like nothing really emulates that. Um, yeah, exactly. exactly. As in like, yeah, things like EQ lifts, it's nice to be in the analog realm, you know, like uh, sometimes, I mean, not obviously plugins are so much better now, but, you know, but certainly back in the day, there were like plugins where you would add EQ boosts and they just didn't sound as good as analog stuff like. So it's nice to know that it's an analog EQ that's in there that's adding kind of do no harm lift. So great. And just to correct myself as well, uh, just to clarify as well, what we were talking about earlier, the uh, the auto gain and the clip safe and those Rednet preamps, those are actually exclusive to the 2i2 and the 4i4. Oh, okay. Right. That's right. And yeah. they, um, the uh, Solo, there's still uh, fantastic preamps on there with 59, uh, 57 dBs of gain on them as well. 57. That's yeah. right, yeah. And uh, and loopback on the Solo as well. But um, yeah, just, just to clarify. Okay, that. so the Solo has not got the Rednet preamps. That's in the 2i2 and the 4i4. Four. That's right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Slightly different preamp, but still 57 dBs a game, which is quite a lot. And you get loopback, and it's two input, and it's smaller, I guess, and less expensive. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Yeah. Fair. 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 There was one more thing, which was loopback. You got very excited about that. We were talking about. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I think this is great. Yeah. You can loopback. So really simply, it's just you can get the audio out of any software running on your computer, and then just run that straight into whatever you're recording in your in your recording software. So if there's something you want to sample from your web browser or uh, or anywhere else, um, or maybe like if you're on a call with someone on, on some video conferencing or something, uh, those channels of audio are now available to record and uh, yeah, makes. Because it's, yeah. it's actually really hard to re-record like the sound from inside your computer from apps and like what the web. Yeah, that's what I'm really excited about. It's uh, it's it, it's more of a challenge than it seems like. It, it seems like be. a really simple problem to solve, but actually, um, yeah, there's all sorts of um, setups issues which which have, have come up against in the past. But now with the with the interface plugged in, it's it's really simple. It's just an extra channel that shows up. Would and so who would that be for? What sort of scenarios would you use that in? Uh, so I often hear like a funny sound on like a, on like a video or something that I want to sample into a into a track. That's really useful. Um, but it's also really useful if um, maybe you're like um, sort of like capturing a conversation with someone online and you want to like loop that back in. Um, in like a podcast scenario. Yeah, that kind of thing like, as yeah. well. You got um, uh, all sorts of like maybe um, uh, yeah, like all sorts of like virtual instruments. Although you'd probably record those straight into your... Mm. Uh, Still, it's like being able to capture stuff just from the web and from out and about, from other apps and other things is very cool. Yes, um, yeah. It, you're right, it is actually quite a hard problem to solve if the like the interface itself doesn't have provision. Yes, a lot of the time you'll have to change, you have to tell the software you're recording into that you're changing sound card to a completely different setting and you can't have that alongside your guitar and yeah, it sort of gets messy, but really simple and straightforward. Last things are... Right, well, what 
are the ones that we can get now? Like, what are the models that we have? So sort of sum up the range. And, and if you can mention the software that comes with them, maybe that would be useful for folks. But we understand what the difference is. What are the various interfaces we can get now? So we've got the Scarlet Solo, the 2i2, and the 4i4. Uh, the primary differences between them is the amount of inputs. So uh, you've got two inputs on the Solo, but it's one XLR connection and one jack connection. Uh, it's really good if you've got like a microphone and an acoustic guitar or or electric guitar or something. It's one of each type, but you can record them both at the same time. That's right, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, on the 2i2, um, it's uh, two inputs, but it can be either XLR or jack on either of them. So it could be two XLRs at once two jacks at once. Can it be or, one XLR and one jack? Yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly, cool. Yeah. Uh, you can also link them together, which is a new feature on these, which really makes things handy. So if you hold down the select button, um, turning the gain off one. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you said they were digitally controlled gain. Yes. That's really yeah, good. exactly. Yeah, okay, cool. Yes, yeah, so that's really handy if you're like recording some stereo output of a synth or something. Yeah, you want them to, two channels to be exactly the same. Exactly, yes. Um, and uh, and then on the 404, you've got uh, four inputs and, and four outputs as well. So um, And you've got M1D1. M1D1? M MIDI. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, that was, that was an attempt to <laughs> cue. Okay, so 4i4 has more inputs, four ims, and four outputs, and, and MIDI, M1D1. And so the 2i2 has got two inputs, like stereo in, and it can be either XLRs or jacks. And then the solo is still two in, but you've only got one XLR and one jack. Right? That's it, yeah. Yeah, so it's sort of, I guess that's like, the solo is for like guitarists, vocalists, recordists, is, would you say? Exactly that, one yeah, yeah, yeah. So but like, or just one mic and or, yeah. or one guitar, like one mono instrument. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the typical UK as we imagine, yeah. yeah. Um, worth mentioning as well, of course, there's the studio bundles as well, which is, um, yeah, as we mentioned earlier, you've got the uh, the headphones and the um, microphone. They're bundled in with the Scarlet Solo and the uh, 2i2 studio bundles, respectively. If you want a mic and a headphones, you can get these packages. Yeah. And you get a good price for the... Everything you need to get going, yeah, is the cables in there. And um, yeah, there's even a nice little uh, cutout stand as well, which you can what? pop your mic in. <laughs> like a, what do you mean? Uh, it's, uh, it's a little mic stand which uh, I think I've got one down here yeah so it's, yeah, you just cut this out straight out of the box and Children, then you pop the mic in this one we made earlier <laughs> I was being facetious I knew that it was there uh, excuse me while I unplug this and then put the microphone in so wait a minute hang on where's the, the little thing oh yeah yeah you get like I mean, I don't think that the, the focus, right, obviously think this would be your primary studio tool for necessarily, like, we recommend a mic stand, right, you know, but yeah. it's a fun thing. Yeah, if you, uh, you've you literally just bought a studio bundle and um, you've just, uh, just started recording for the first time, um, you want someone to put the microphone without it rolling around on the table or having to hold it, then uh, yeah, this comes in the box, you just cut it out and then um, slot the microphone in and, and away you go. That is full A team. Full A team. <laughs> yeah. Mic stands are good too, but and you also get the clip. You get a really nice mic clip with the thing, so obviously, and it works with uh, various threaded sizes. So That's yeah, Alex, thank you so much for demystifying the mysterious world of specs and uh, hidden features. Thank that's, you. That's quite right. Oh, and I just forgot to mention <laughs> the uh, the Focusrite Control Two software, which is now out as well. So um, yeah, that's the control software which allows you to uh, you know play with all these settings and the remote control preamps just from your computer. Really. Oh, that's a nice touch. You can basically do all the setup from your computer or from the interface as well. That's it, yeah, yeah. Included software as well, not just like the control interface, like what plugins, do you get a DAW, all those sorts of things. Yeah, there is loads of included uh, software as well. So it's not just the software to control it, but there's like yeah, DAW, so you've got Ableton Live Light and Pro Tools Artist uh, bundled in. You've got loads of plugins, so there's a re and they're really nice, like there's a really nice um, a guitar amp simulator. So you could plug an electric guitar straight in and get a really good sound straight away. Uh, there's loads of reverbs, there's compressors, um, there's some like instruments and uh, it really is everything you need to get going. So it's, it's not just uh, a box to plug in uh, and get sound um, from 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 your world into the computer, but there's a bunch of stuff you can do once you're in the in the, in yeah. the software as well. Wicked, nice. Well, can't do better than that, can you? So <laughs> thanks very much, Alex. Thanks. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Ask a question. I'm sure we can try and answer it. And uh, links below to the whole new range of these wonderful Focusrite interfaces. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.